This conference will now be recorded. We have some bad weather going through New Orleans right now, and we have lots of rain going on. My name is Melinda Bourgeois. I am the owner of Travel Central. We are based in New Orleans. We've been in business since 1988, celebrating over 30 years selling um, travel to uh, pu the local public. We are very fortunate today. We have Claudio. He is a vice president with Delta Scandinavia. He is based in Denmark, and we'll be presenting today um, Finland, Norway, Iceland, and as a bonus, Greenland. So we'll be doing that as well as we have an advisor from our office, uh, Bailey, who's on the call, who is actually leading a trip to Finland in March of 2022, but also is one of our experts in adventure travel. And she'll be introducing herself in just a minute. So now we'll go to the next slide. And Claudio has control over this. So just one moment. Well, um, I was, before we get to the actual presentation, let me just tell you a little bit before we get started about Travel Central. We do have 15 travel advisors here, all here to help people design vacations from the beginning planning process all the way to the end of the present until they return home from your vacation. Our goal is that you work with one advisor and get the same answers on the same person each time you call into us. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Claudia, who will journey us through Finland, Norway, Iceland, and Greenland. Okay, Claudia, go ahead. Thank you very much, Melinda, and welcome, everyone. Um, we start our virtual journey in this moment, uh, only virtual for the moment, as we're in the north of Europe. Um, I like to say that uh, it's, a, it's a, a region for all the seasons. That's because um, no matter when you come to the, to the north, you always have something very nice to do. I mean, if you come in the summer, you have fantastic, you have daylight for many hours, you have you can enjoy the Norwegian fjords, you can see many beautiful landscapes, you can do a lot of adventure activities. But if you come in the winter, then you're gonna see the northern lights and you have all the activities on the snow, the fun with the snowmobile or huskies or reindeers. But you can also come uh, in spring or autumn and you can still see northern lights, you can still have uh, a lot of uh, different uh, activities. So, it's really, it's not a, unlike many other destinations in the world, this part is, uh, is really open all year round. What is that you find in the north? I mean, why, why the north? For sure, for sure, here you, you have a lot of nature. I mean, we still have cities, capital cities, probably, you know, Copenhagen, Oslo, Stockholm. But it's true that the people who travel to this area of the world, they come here for the, for, the, for the nature, for the beautiful nature, the Norwegian fjords, the glaciers, the volcanoes, the ice, the snow. So it's really 100% it's really nature. Uh, we can offer fantastic experiences. I mean, not always uh, you have the chance to stay an overnight in a glassy glue and see the northern lights um, while, while just staying on your bed or uh, you cannot always uh, you cannot always have a snow go snowmobiling on top of a glacier. So it's really uh, something unique, and uh, and um, there is a lot of choice for all the for all the possibilities. Uh, we do offer uh, history and culture. Of course, we don't have the same past, maybe that um, or the same empires that the Romans or the Greeks had, but we did have the Vikings. They left an important heritage, and uh, and it's really interesting. It's a really interesting. Um, uh, history the one of the Vikings so uh, it's really we, we can offer some history and some culture as well as I mentioned before not the lights um, if I think of 10 years ago not so many people were traveling because of the northern lights it's uh, it's uh, funny to think that the tourism for northern lights probably started yes around 10 years ago before there was not really the interest now if you didn't see the northern lights apparently you didn't live your life so everybody was is traveling for the northern lights which is which are, of course, during you see them during the winter and not not in the capital cities. You have to go more in the north, in the Arctic region. Um, the opposite of the northern lights is, of course, the midnight sun, uh, because during the winter here it's dark. Uh, many for many hours there are only few hours of daylight, according to where you are in Scandinavia. But you might have only five or six hours of daylight during the day. Uh, if you come in the summer, always in the Arctic region, you have this phenomenon called midnight sun, which is that the sun actually never sets. So you are you can be at one o'clock in the night and still have uh, daylight. And uh, of course, that's that's uh, pretty special, pretty particular. 
a very nice thing that we can offer here in the north is that you can do a trip combine different nations so it's different countries so you can actually build up an itinerary with uh, six or seven countries and uh, and uh, explore them uh, during one only one tour only um, lately there's a lot of talk about sustainability in tourism and that's something that um, Scandinavia is pretty ahead uh, on because uh, for example there are some cities here like Copenhagen in Denmark where it's going to be completely green by 2030 if you go to Iceland, you realize that 98% of their energy comes from nature, from the soil. So they don't need any, they don't need any pollution to, to create energy. Everything is really clean. So these are elements that already show you how these these, uh, these uh, countries are ahead on the in the for sustainability and for um, for eco-friendly activities and everything. Then now we talk about safety. These are countries that are extremely safe. Here the crime rate is very low. Uh, if you ask me, I mean, I hardly remember to close the door of my house and uh, and my children grow without any really any fear of, you know, uh, being scared of the, the ones when you when you are in the streets. So, I mean, it's really it's really a safe place. Um, there is some I mean, especially where in the touristic areas, there might be some uh, some little, you know, pickpockets that come here and there. But otherwise, it's really it's really relax the the mood here so that's a very that's a big plus and then of course in these times of covid especially in these times of covid unfortunately a trip to scandinavia can be more attractive because here we have very big spaces but not so many people um, if you think that the biggest countries of all the scandinavian countries is uh, sweden with 10 million people and i mean uh th that's very that's very little iceland only has 300,000 inhabitants so it's really you come here you have all the space you want in the nature and there are not so many people around you that's very that's a big plus but let's start uh, one by one with all the countries we start with Denmark and uh, especially in particular Copenhagen because of course Denmark offers more than Copenhagen but for for a tourist coming from the US it's probably you know the getaway to Scandinavia because many flights come to Copenhagen or you you need an overnight or two and once you're here then I suggest you to visit the city because it has a lot a lot to to offer what what is very nice in Denmark I mean besides the effect that when you arrive everybody gets really um, surprised how, about the amount of bikes that there are going around in the in the city uh, actually as I said um, Copenhagen is about to be to become green by 2030 and that's also why there's a, a culture of biking, people bike to work. They don't take the car. People bike to go visit their friends. They don't take the car. Now here you can see a small picture with two children being driven by the mother to the kindergarten. Um, let's say that already like this, this is quite a, an important picture because you see the snow. So you think, okay, even if it's snowing, they go to they go they drive their children to the to the kindergarten on the bike. That would be already enough. What you don't know also because you can't see the face of the lady, unfortunately, has been cut by the, this effect, this round effect. This is actually the princess of Denmark. So, also the princess of Denmark drives her children to 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 the kindergarten. So that says a lot about the culture of biking here. Um, Denmark is famous, of course, for the Lego. You know the the, the bricks. Then we also have a Legoland here. I mean, the official, the the first one is uh, is actually from Denmark, from the Billund, the, the little city where the Lego comes from. Once you're in Denmark, you're going to learn a lot about royal house and castles. You're going to visit different castles. They're all very beautiful. Denmark is really, in all Europe nowadays, is uh, is the capital of architecture. Uh, if you have uh, the smallest interest interest for architecture, I suggest your trip to Copenhagen because you really come you really coming to see the most beautiful, innovative uh, buildings. In they, they have. They have been winning several awards all over the world for several years in a row. And Copenhagen is really like a, an op, an, like an, a space, an open space for architectural experiments. They all the most important architects in the world go to Denmark to to have space to produce their own uh, their own creations. Like like if you give a a a, a white wall to a person who, who wants to do graffiti, they do the same here. And they always say yes to architectures and to architecture architects and and invite them to 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 show off. So, so that's really nice. In Denmark, we can do a lot of gastronomic tours. Um, you know, 
we, we have the Danish pastries that you can do a tasting on them, or otherwise you can also do a beer tasting. You probably know that there are a couple of brands um, in Denmark that are pretty famous worldwide. One is Carlsberg, the other one is Tuborg. You can go visit their factories and uh, it's, really, it's really interesting and it's nice. And of course, gastronomy has, uh, has developed lately really, really a lot. And um, there, are, there are some of the best restaurants in the world. Actually, there's a restaurant called Noma that has been winning the, the prize for the best restaurant in the world for five years and four, four years in the world. So it's quite a famous restaurant and you need to reserve a table like six months in advance. But trust me, it's worth the waiting because it's really a unique experience. So as I said, Denmark has a lot to offer. I couldn't put everything in the presentation today, but uh, for sure, when coming to Scandinavia, or not, not for sure, but almost for sure, you're going to stop in Copenhagen. And, uh, and once you're in Copenhagen, you really enjoy it. You're really going to enjoy the, the city. The mood is really nice here and uh, everybody's always relaxed and there's no surprise that Denmark has been uh, the happiest country in the world for several years so it's uh, it is really a nice place to to see with your eyes and to to see how they live up here. <clears throat> After Denmark we go to Norway. Um, this is a country that is very famous for the Norwegian fjords and um, I mean, it's not so. I mean, it's not so big in terms of population. Only only five five and a half million people, but Norway is as big, actually, a bit bigger than Italy. So if you understand, if you think that Italy has sixty million people, for example, why Norway there are only five? So it's uh, you you understand how much space there is. Um, their slogan, I mean, the the visit Norway slogan is powered by nature, and couldn't and it couldn't be any any better because actually, when you're in Norway, you really see the nature at its at its best. The capital city is Oslo. Uh, what is funny about uh, Norway is its uh, recent history, because in the 60s, Norway was quite a poor, quite a poor country, actually, and uh, they had the luck to find oil in the Northern Sea, in the in the Norwegian side of the Northern Sea, and that's, therefore they found so much oil they became the richest country in in, uh, in Europe, actually. Um, so uh, otherwise they were not, I mean, they, while, can, while Sweden and Denmark and Finland, they were always quite wealthy. Norway was actually a real, really poor country. Now with the oil is the richest of all, but not only of Scandinavia, in all Europe is the richest, is the richest country. In Norway, of course, this is the homeland of Salmon. And um, besides Oslo, you're going to see another very nice city, which is called Bergen which is located very close to the fjords, the, to the main fjords. So that's, that's for sure something you're going to visit once you visit the fjords in Norway. And then, of course, there are several glaciers here and there. And uh, once you are on, a, on an itinerary in Norway, you, you can't avoid to see ice or snow somewhere. So that's, that's, that's going to happen. What is very particular with Norway is that, uh, let's say, on a touristic point of view, you, you divide the country in two. One is the, side, the southern side of Norway, where you see the Norwegian fjords. While then there is a northern side of Norway, which is the Arctic region, where if you go in the summer, that's when you see the, the midnight sun. But if you go in the winter, that's when you see the northern lights. Uh, here there are some smaller city, uh, consider the Oslo, so the capital city has less than a million inhabitants. Here, maybe the, the capital of the Arctic region is called Tromsø. And it has 40,000 people, so very little town. Um, but here is where you can go see all, all the, where you can go have all the funny activities on the snow and the ice, or with the huskies and the reindeers and so on. Um, then in northern Norway, there's also another little town at the border with Russia, which is called Kirkenes. This is famous because they have a snow castle, and because here is where you can do the king crab safari, where you go to the sea, you catch the king crabs, and then you actually eat what you what you caught. Um, for, it's not such a big big deal for, for Americans, but it is for Europeans. That's where you have North Cape, so the, the extreme northern point of, of Europe. And there are many tourists traveling to North Cape just to, you know, it's, it's like a, reaching a goal. You reach the, the, northern, pass, the, northern, it's not, the northern part of Europe and, and you want to reach the, the very end. A beautiful part of, the, of Norway is is the, the, the Lofoten Islands. You see a big picture here with a mountain behind this uh, blue uh, square uh, with, 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 the, with the titles here. Uh, this is a, an island of fishermen, actually an archipelago where fishermen lives and live. And um, here is where you go see really the, the old traditions of Norway and where they 
where they work the stockfish and they sell it all, all over the world. So it's really beautiful landscapes, uh, interesting history, and uh, you can actually go and sleep in the fishermen's fishermen's huts. So you do a very authentic experience and you you live your life together with, with the Norwegians. As I said, as you can see also from the pictures, this is there's a lot of snow. We are in the Arctic region of Europe, so it's really up to the north. That's where you see the northern lights, but also where you have a lot of snow. When I mean a lot of snow, from end of November until mid-April, you have a lot of snow where you can go do all the activities that you want, and uh, and um, it's really it's really special. It's really amazing actually to to be there. After Norway, actually now you can see more pictures about Norway here. Some uh, some fjords, uh, some glaciers, some uh, this the one on the top right. It's uh, North Cape. And this is a picture that has been taken when I when I mentioned the midnight sun. This is exactly what you see. So you see that there's still a lot of light. So you never really see the, the light going down. And that's pretty pretty special. Uh, after Norway, we go to Sweden. As I mentioned before, this is the biggest country of all in Scandinavia. It's only 10 million people, but it's the biggest one of all. The capital city is Stockholm. Um, other important cities are Gothenburg and Malmo. Um, Sweden is famous abroad for, for a couple of things. First of all, for some brands, IKEA, uh, Volvo, but there are also many other brands that you probably don't know, but they are, they, are, they are Swedish. And then for the music, at least in Europe, we all look at Sweden as the big, big, big source of uh, music because they have had several groups and several, I mean, some, some sort of music production that is, uh, is famous worldwide. Uh, ABBA, Roxette is of base, but also nowadays they still produce a lot of music and it's a nice expression of their culture. If you go to Stockholm, you are gonna see some really beautiful museums. Um, my favorite, uh, I put a couple of pictures here because they are the two favorite of mine, but one is the Vasa Museum. The Vasa is, um, is a ship that sank the same day when it started sing, sailing for the first time and it's been preserved under the sea for a couple of centuries when it was brought back to life. And it, you see, what you see here is 86% is the original. So you enter the museum and you see the boat, the ship as it was. It's really, it's really nice. It's, there's a fantastic history and the museum is uh, it's, uh, worth a visit because once you're in Stockholm, it's really a pity not to go to see this museum. And the other fairy of mine is the city hall. The city hall is actually where they serve the dinner for the Nobel Prize. And that, there you can see the picture on the right. Actually, that's the room where they serve the, the dinner. As this is just a couple of examples of what you can see in Stockholm, besides the city that is beautiful by itself, the shopping streets going around in the old town. Um, it's really nice. But then you have this uh, possibility with this museum. And, and if you have any special interest, trust me, you're going to find a museum about it. There is the museum for the photogra photo photography. There's a museum for the ABBA themselves. So really, everything you 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 name it and you found it you find it in in, uh, in stockholm what is also interesting here uh, uh, like i said before for norway is that there is a there are a thousand kilometers from the capital city to the arctic so to the northern part of sweden and then you go what to what is called lapland so again we are in the arctic region and again here is where you're going to see a lot of ice and uh, you're going to have a lot of fun in the in the on the snow and on the ice uh, here, the two small, the two famous, let's say, cities, even if they are extremely small, they are Kiruna and Luleå. They are located two or three hours away from each other. And from Sweden, it's actually the very first ice hotel in the world. Um, it's the most famous one. It's in Kiruna, and uh, you can sleep in the ice hotel. You can either decide to have um, a cold room, so in the the room where the, where you actually have your bed in on the in the ice on the ice. And uh, or you can decide to sleep in a warm room. When you when you have the cold room, the the hotel also gives you the possibility to 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 move during the night to a colder uh, to, to a warmer environment because uh, it's uh, it's difficult for the human body to adapt on a on a short time in a short time to to sleeping in in this uh, cold temperature. So many many people, not everybody, but let's say that there are there are some people who during the night they wake up and they can't sleep anymore because it's too weird to stay there in the in the ice hotel but it's worth once you're there you should try so also here you can do special uh, special activities husky snowmobiles you can you can meet the sami which are the local you know the indigenous people in in lapland 
also here, of course, we are in the Arctic region, so you're going to see the Northern Lights. Um, and also you can do some extremely nice uh, activities. Now, I put a couple of pictures here. This, uh, the hover here the, the, that you can see here is uh, on, a, on a frozen sea. So you're not on, the, on a lake, you're not on the soil, but actually this is a sea that freezes during the winter. And the very special experience, according to me, is uh, the one on the bottom left, the picture on the bottom left, which is called Dinner on Ice. You go there, so uh, uh, the guide put you on a sledge, you go, you, you're driven um, to this uh, tent where a chef serves you a, a three course dinner. You have to imagine the, the environment. You are on, the, on a frozen sea in the middle of nowhere. And, if, of nowhere. and if, uh, if you're lucky enough, you just get out of the tent and you see the northern lights dancing on, on your head. So it's really, it's really a once in a lifetime kind of experience. Um, what is very nice here in uh, Swedish Lapland, or I mean, in, Lapland, in, in all Lapland actually, is that you can cross the border between Norway, Sweden, Finland with few kilometers. So you can combine an itinerary with three different countries by just moving around of a couple of hours, even less sometimes. And then, of course, in Sweden, uh, in, no in northern Sweden, you can do maybe one of the most beautiful activities that you can do up here, which is the icebreaker. Uh, you can do it either in Sweden or in Finland. Uh, this is again, uh, the icebreaker is a, is a ship that only works on the ice. This ship couldn't be traveling on a normal in the water. Um, it is just, I mean, you just have to be there sailing on the ice. So once you're there, you hear the noise of the, the ice breaking under you, under the boat, under the ship. Then at some stage, the, the captain finds a place where the ice is thick enough for the, for the people on board to be to be off so they can just walk on the ice they, they also give you some special equipment and you can dive in the water and they i mean it's uh, for, of course it's super thermal and super isolated waterproof and everything so there are no risks at all then nobody takes risk on takes risk on these uh, kind of excursions but um i mean it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an experience that you have to try it's uh, it's very difficult to explain but by, by from the noise what you see the light, you see the color of the light is a bit orange, a bit yellowish. Uh, the ice around it, there's a sea made of ice around you and you can walk on it or you can dive into it. So it's really, it's really special. Then we go to Finland. Um, also in this case, there is a, a Finland in the south and a Finland in the north. The Finland in the south is mainly Helsinki. Helsinki is an interesting capital because it has had a um, strong um, influence from Russia. Finland is the closest country in Europe to Russia. So um, it, let's say it's never been Russia or maybe, I mean, we're talking about centuries ago when Russians came in. So it's been both Russian and Swedish in a way, but that's, that's many centuries ago. Then it's been Finland for many, many years. But you can see the influence from Russia in the architecture, in the way the people think and the culture. So in many, in many ways, it's, uh, it's, it has an influence from Russia. But it also developed its own, uh, its own culture and everything. So it's really interesting. Plus, the position makes it really nice to, to combine. I mean, from, me, from Helsinki, you can travel to St. Petersburg in three hours by train. You can travel to Stockholm with, an over, with a cruise ship on, a, on one overnight, and you are in Stockholm. With two hours ferry, you can go to, to the Baltic, so you go to Estonia. So it is really a place that gives you a possibility to, to move around in, for the rest of Europe, so to the rest of Europe. So it's really interesting. The southern part of Finland offers mainly, it's about relaxed spa. There are a lot of spa resorts. There are beautiful lakes where there are a lot of hotels around of different uh, um, levels. So it's really about enjoying the, the relaxed and the nice weather that they have. Um, when you go instead to north, to the northern part of, of Finland, we go back to Lapland. So there's always this uh, this um, division, let's say. And then people ask me, but what well, is there? Is there isn't there anything between like the capital and the and the Arctic? Yes, there are a lot of places. I mean, there are, there are a lot of villages. But let's say that you don't find the snow to do the the to do the activities and uh, most of the culture is actually in the capital city. So you you I mean, I would say that you can skip the part between Helsinki and the, and, the, the, and the northern part of the country 
because you're not missing out on something very important, but actually you're, you're going straight to, to the fun and to the activities and everything. So uh, Finland, of all the, uh, let's say Lapland, when you say Lapland, it's both, as I said before, Norway, Sweden, Finland, actually also Russia is Lapland. For Lapland, we define the region where the Sami, so the Lapish people, live. Um, touristic wise, I mean, let's say that this is where, where you go for, to have fun with the northern lights and the snow activities. That's that's mostly what what is known. What why we, we refer to Lapland today. Um, the Finnish Lapland was actually the, the the first one to come out. They are really really good at uh, everything they do. There are a lot of hotels, different kind of hotels of accommodation. Uh, if you if you're traveling with families, this is the place because they have the Santa Claus village. Nobody, everybody claims that Santa Claus is coming from their own country, but actually Santa Claus is coming from Finland, I can tell you. And uh, they have the village, you can meet him in person when you travel there, and uh, and um, therefore they have a lot of uh, family hotels, uh, possibilities for families, so this is for sure something to, to keep in consideration. And of course, here is where you find really all the glassy glues, the, um, the majority of the glassy glues actually are located in Finland. So if your dream in, the, in life is to spend one night or two in a, in a glassy glue and see the northern lights, then that's, this is the place. Besides the glassy glues, you also have other fun activities. This is uh, the first picture here is the, it's called the Arctic bath. It's a very uh, luxurious, um, spa where where there are only 14 rooms and the spa the access to the spa is only dedicated to the people who who have a room booked at the hotel so it's really really exclusive in a way then there are the three three the, the, the this on the top right are called the um, uh, glass villa igloos so it's a, it's a it's a mix of a villa and a igloo as you can see on the bottom left that's a that's a more classic glass igloo and then on the bottom right, instead, is the ice hotel. So this is the region where you find all this uh, very special and beautiful accommodation. And uh, that, um, you know, um, I was once told by by a visit Finland, so, uh, for, from a from a touristic uh, company that the hashtag Glassy Glue is nice, so number three uh, for in the in in the for people traveling to to Scandinavia and. Uh, nor the lights instead is number two, the hashtag number two in all, all over the world. So that's why it's so popular. Everybody wants to go to a glassy glue and everybody wants to go to see the northern lights. So that's really, that's the place where you find the, the combination of two of them. Then we go to Iceland. Iceland, which is really a place where you go to see nature, 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 nature. It's a place of a lot of contrast because here you see a lot of ice that's why it's called iceland but actually you see i mean these the landscapes are all green you'll be surprised once you're there to see to, to see all the green uh, how green iceland is actually here is where you have the geothermal energy where the geysers they they are so they, they you can see several places in iceland there is hot water coming up from different different places in iceland you see a lot of waterfalls, a lot of cascades, a lot of volcanoes, a lot of glaciers. So there is always a contrast. There is a volcano, so you 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 think of fire probably when you think of a volcano, but then there are glaciers next to it. So it's really it's really amazing. You had to be there. You had to see all the. It's really also. I mean, when you are in Iceland, you realize how humans, luckily, I would say, how humans, how little we are compared to nature. In these days, probably you read on the news that there is a volcano. Um, uh, erupting in Iceland, no, nothing to to, com to be compared to what happened in 2010 with, with the Fat Teljoku, the, the famous volcano that stopped all the flights all over the world. Uh, a very important thing, very, very important to, to mention about Iceland is that it is the first European country that opened up to Americans for, so if you show that you have a certificate of, of, get, of having got the vaccine or if you have already the antibodies in your blood, you can go to Iceland without quarantine, without anything else. So uh, if you're planning a trip for the summer, please think of Iceland because, because that's the, the first country to be open for Americans this summer. What, uh, what, what does 
how do you imagine a tour to Iceland? I mean, you, the most classic thing is the ring road, which you see there is a, there is a, now I marked it in blue here. There's a, it's called the A1. So the main road in Iceland is actually following the whole island. And you travel on this road, which is very big for Icelandic standards. But as you can see, there's only, there are only two lanes, one, one, one way and the other one the other way. So that's very big for Icelanders. Uh, probably you are laughing right now, but uh, but uh, that's how it is. And on this street, you have access to all the main um, uh, attractions that Iceland has to offer. So you don't have to get off so many kilometers to see uh, the most beautiful things in Iceland. And of course, you can also travel inland and you can also climb on the glaciers. But that's another thing. If you want to have a self-drive tour in Iceland, you just take a car. It's very safe, as you can see, one lane only. There's normally not so much traffic, no, absolutely nothing, actually. Um, you just take the car and go around and you will see all the beauty, the beauty of Iceland just by just in this way. And it's really, I mean, now I don't want to exaggerate, but it's really sometimes difficult to keep focus on the street because you are so, uh, I mean, you're so amazed by what you see that you have to remember somebody has to tell you, hey, look ahead, because the, you, you are watching maybe a beautiful landscape. You have a, a glacier on the right hand side and then you have a, lava beach on your on your left side so it's really it's really amazing I mean, you have to be there and see with your eyes iceland is also the place where you do most of the i mean many cool cool things like the super jeeps the you can go uh, sailing among the icebergs you can again know the lights with some special accommodation you can do a helicopter tour of the, of the volcano so it's really you can actually dive into the volcano you can you can do really really a nice thing um, I, let's say that now I just read a question. I, I reply quickly to the question: Is that um, how long does it take to drive around Island, Iceland? Sorry. Let's say that in one week you have, you can easily uh, make a whole tour of the island. Of course, if you have ten days, that's the best uh, timing according to me, because then you don't have to hurry or stress uh, between one place and the other one. You can see the you can also see some special things that in one week you you would normally cut off from the itinerary but if you have 10 days we can add also some a couple of special excursions for example if you have one week only in order to put a super jeep excursion you really have to you know squeeze it in while if you have 10 days you can do it without any problem so so just to give you an idea why i mentioned 10 days and not one week but if you have only one week it's absolutely uh, perfect i mean you can do everything you can see the whole island uh, so that's uh, that's um yeah <clears throat> uh now i gave a little break to my voice i show you instead a video of what is uh, winter up here in the north i hope that you all enjoy the video and i uh, hope the quality is good enough so just give it a couple of seconds to start
So I hope that um, the video gave, I mean, gave a picture of what you can really do during the winter here in, in the north. And then uh, before finishing, I would like to talk about Greenland, which is, uh, let's say, a new destination. I mean, it's always been there, of course, but, uh, but uh, it's very remote. There are not so many flights, but this is really, if you are um, an, an adventure lover, if you really want something unique, something that not so many people have been seen already, then, then I would suggest you to go to Greenland. Uh, it's a country that really, it's, it has a dark past. I mean, first of all, it's very huge. I mean, it's the biggest island in the world, but as you see, there are only 57,000 people living here. Um, there, are, there is one city which is called Nuuk. There are many, many small towns or villages, and there are no roads that connect these villages. So the main, um, the main mean of transportation is actually the boat. And then, of course, today there's also aircrafts or airplanes or helicopters that go back and forth through the different city. Um, it is a place where people have been living for centuries in extremely hard conditions. You can imagine it's very full of full of ice and uh, storms uh, pretty often, especially in the inland in the, the inland part. So where where there are where the, they say that the villages are all located on the coast because inland is going to be very complicated to live. Um, let's say that this, uh, these communities they were living of uh, hunting and fishing, and, but then. The Western, so mostly the Danes, because uh, Greenland is uh, still uh, related to Denmark. Uh, they arrived and they took off their habits. So they 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 told them that they couldn't um, hunt anymore the seals or the whales because that was against the you know the the let's say that it was it was not uh, human enough to do it. So so they these people they found themselves in their land with, without anything to do as suddenly because. The only thing they, they could do was to hunt. The Danes arrived, they gave them houses and, and these things, but they told them not to hunt anymore. So they suffered a lot in, for really culturally and not only socially for because of this change in the 70s and still they are paying the price for this, uh, for this change. But now things are going much better. Um, the only thing that is uh, a bit worrying about Greenland right now is that the, all the climate changes are really changing Greenland. If you think that um, uh, in this moment there is a war, I mean, a silent war between many big countries in the world, because you, you have to think that the, the soil of Greenland is really full of minerals and many other materials. Uh, among those, the rare earths, there are some materials that are used to, to build the, the circuits for the phones or for the electronic things that we have in our life today. And for many centuries, it was not really possible to to extract these things, to, 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 how do you say, to dig into the ice. Now that the ice is not there anymore because there is the, the, the global heating, then, then, uh, then suddenly it's all the things are coming up and people are really into people. I mean, countries are very interesting in these minerals. So that's why it's a very interesting, I mean, I made it very short, but it's really, really interesting to find out about history and life in Greenland. Why do you go to Greenland? You will go for the dogs like for the big Arctic Five. You know there are there are big five in Africa, then there are the big Arctic Five in Greenland. So they are, they are in this case the dog sledding. So here you have the the real huskies. When you go to Finland or to Norway and you have a husky safari, actually they are they are a mix of Alaskan and Siberian huskies. In Greenland, the huskies are original from Greenland and they don't get mixed with uh, with other uh, dogs. Let's say so without a husky, so, so they are 100% pure. Also here in Greenland, we are under the polar circle, so there, is, there are the, the northern lights. Ice and snow, that's not gonna mean, that's gonna lack in Greenland, at least and, until we have, uh, the, the, global, the global heating is not so bad, we are gonna keep ice and snow for, for, um, for, for, for ice and snow. So then we have pioneer people, as I said before, it's very interesting to go and meet the Inuits, to talk to them. Um, and then the whales. Uh, you, if, especially if you go in the in the summer, um, you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of whales around. You don't need to go so far from the coastline to to see the, the whales. So uh, actually, sometimes you reach the pier where you should board the boat and uh, and depart for your safari to the whales. And already there, you can hear the noise of the whales. Uh, so it's really it's really they are everywhere. I read now somebody asking me if it's uh, safe. Yes, it is super safe. It is uh, super safe. Um, 
and uh, and um, the let's say that the social problems you don't see. I mean, they are not uh, they are not um, for tourists because the tourists in Greenland is really precious. Uh, there are not so many tourists. As I said, it's a very remote country, so they they you don't you don't face the problems. Also, because you go to the touristic places while the social problems are maybe on the eastern part of the of the country. So that's what you can see in Greenland. I mean, I think the pictures talk by themselves. Uh, a curiosity for you guys is that uh, the picture on the bottom left, here, bottom left is actually I took it myself at one o'clock in the night. So here it was. Uh, uh, late May uh, 2018, I think, yes, 18, and I was on an iceberg sightseeing tour, and uh, and um, um, and therefore it's uh, it's really interesting. I mean, you can you can experience this uh, this phenomenon of uh, of midnight sun. So that's uh, that's how it is. Uh, Melinda, maybe you want to take over here. Hi, right, we're back. Um, it looks like the presentation went down, but we just wanted to tell everybody thank you for coming to the presentation. Um, the, the PowerPoint went down. Our goal in every presentation is just to really present the very different ideas and places to go when you travel. Um, and Bailey, if you're online, let's go ahead and hear a little bit about you and, and what's been going on. Hey y'all, I'm Bailey. I'm an advisor at Travel Central. I'm also leading a trip to Finland that sold out for um, Finnish Lapland in March of 2022, which we're excited about. So I've been working closely with Claudio and his company for the past year, just about planning trips and doing stuff. So if any of these destinations are interesting to you or you have any questions or want help planning a trip to these destinations, we are a great um, resource to reach out to. I love adventure and adventure travel, so I'm a great person to work with. And I work directly with Claudio for these destinations and these types of trips and experiences. So we'd love to help. Okay, go ahead, Melinda. Okay, thank you, Claudio. Yeah. Is there an editor? Okay. And basically, as we said earlier, we are your ultimate travel resource. We have, we, our goal is to inspire and make your dreams come true. We pride ourselves on being forefront of, the, of what's going on in the world. 2021 is going to be a very unique year. Every day we find out new things, whether you have to be vaccinated, whether you have to quarantine, the world keeps changing, but the, but I do know that people want to continue traveling and we're here to help you. So we do appreciate you joining us today. I thought the presentation was fabulous. I'm ready to go to all those destinations. Um, and I look forward to hearing from y'all if we can help you book any travel. Thank you. Thanks y'all, bye. Bye-bye now.